all creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing. Sun, moon and stars rejoice on high. Praise to the Lord of light divine. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Praise the Father above. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah for His infinite love. Sing hallelujah. to the giver of good things merciful father holy king join with the angels and sing out loud praise him reigns above the cloud sing hallelujah sing hallelujah Praise the Father above, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, for His infinite love, sing hallelujah. Praise Him when the morning comes, hallelujah for the rising. Oh, praise Him when the day is done, hallelujah, praise the Lord of love. Praise Him when the morning comes, hallelujah for praising sun. Oh, praise Him when the day is done, hallelujah, praise the Lord of love. All oh, creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Praise the Father above. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah for His infinite love. Sing hallelujah. Praise Him when the morning comes, hallelujah, for the rising. Oh, praise Him when the day is done, hallelujah, praise the Lord of love. All right, so we come to worship this God of love, the giver of all good things. He is the merciful Father. He is the Holy King. So let's join with the angels and praise Him this evening. One more song we're going to sing. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, you be the glory. Maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your word. King over all the universe, you be the glory. I'm alive because I'm alive in you. All because of Jesus, I am alive. 
It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ. I was mean and raised this dead man's life. All because of Jesus, I'm alive. Give her a fair breath, I breathe. All to the fall eternity. Give her a fairy perfecting. You be the glory. Make her a heaven and a earth. No one can comprehend your word. King over all the universe. You be the glory. I'm alive because I'm alive in you. All because of Jesus, I am alive. All because the blood of Jesus Christ covers me and raises this dead man's life. All because of Jesus, every sunrise sings your praise. Universe cries out your praise, singing freedom all my days. Now that I'm alive, every sunrise sings your praise. Universe cries out your praise. Singing freedom all my days. Now that I'm alive, all because of Jesus, I'm alive. All because the blood of Jesus Christ covers me and raised this dead man's life. All because of Jesus, I'm alive. All because of Jesus, I'm alive. Let's come to the throne of God with thanksgiving in our hearts, for it is He who has covered up all our iniquities who has removed our transgressions as far as the east is from the west. It is he who has raised up dead people like you and me to life. And we give thanks to you, O Master, for what you have done. The maker of heaven and earth. No one can comprehend, O Lord, how much you are worth. Let all glory belong to you and you alone. Father, as we study the scriptures this evening, we pray that we would be able to see this God of glory, to experience him in our lives like none, no, never before, O Lord, Father. And Father, help us to hear his voice. Help us to hear his guidance, O Master, that we may be people of power and we may be a people of praise. We commit ourselves into your hands, O Father, in all our busyness, in all our routine, in all our, all our work, O Lord, Father. Help us not to forget our time with you. We commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, so a blessed New Year to all of you. Welcome back to the Sunday evening Bible study. And today we're going to focus on uh, Acts. Let's go back to the Acts. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, I think we are in Acts chapter 4. All right. All right. So, we saw how uh, Apostle Peter and John, and they did this amazing miracle in front of the people. And how that uh, that became a starting point for Peter to share the word of God again. And today we're going to focus on chapter 4, 
of Acts. Okay, I think we can do up to verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. Okay, Acts chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them. Being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander, and as many as were the, of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So an amazing, amazing message that Peter had to speak there, right in front of the Sanhedrin. Okay. So we saw in the last time, you know, uh, when we were meeting in December, we saw that this was this lame man was sitting at the temple gate called Beautiful, but nothing beautiful came for him other than, uh, you know, he was a beggar and he was getting alms from the people. But then <clears throat> suddenly everything became beautiful when the apostles came there. And they started giving him the gospel. In the name of Jesus, they told him to rise and walk. And this man leaped up to his feet. And then he went inside the temple after sitting outside the temple for so long, after being an outcast for such a long time, he was now accepted. And he was able to go in and worship the Lord in the holy temple. And this has caused a lot of division. A lot of, you know, uh, lot of uh, people are now stirred up. Because they know that you know this has something to do with Jesus, whom they thought was finished. A few weeks back, they thought that Jesus is dead and gone, and they were all heaving a sigh of relief. But now, things have changed. Okay, so <clears throat> if you look at ministries today, and you compare the ministries of those days, you would see that you know those days ministries did not run on budgets. No? He did not go on budgets provided by wealthy donors. Today, we are at an advantage, right? Because we have so many people supporting the ministry and so many people who are donors who help the ministries, right? And pastors are well-educated. They are qualified people, right? But those days, they didn't have any of those advantages. The preachers were unschooled. The ministry was not funded by wealthy donors. But we know that thousands and thousands of people were joining the churches. So, find it strange to believe. no? When Jesus was there, sinners were attracted to Jesus. He was like a magnet attracting metals. Okay? Tax collectors, prostitutes, anybody who is an outcast, who is a despised person, they were being attracted towards Jesus. But they were the religious people were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. No one wanted to go near them. In fact, when they saw the Pharisees and Sadducees, people, sinners ran away from them because they would only find fault with them. See? And today the church should be like magnets, attracting sinners. But sadly, the church has become like Pharisees. And the sinners don't have want to do anything to do with, want nothing to do with the churches. So they are running away when they hear, when they see the preacher, when they see the pastor, when they see the church person, you know, they don't want to be associated with that person. So maybe we are wrong somewhere and Jesus is trying to show us an example here, right? Unschooled people preaching great messages, thousands of people being saved without even having the funding that was needed. 
right? So what is the secret of their success? This chapter is going to give us the answer for that, okay? And definitely, if you look at the last uh, few verses from verse 23 onwards, you'll see that they really knew how to pray. That is one of the secrets of their success, you know? They knew how to pray. And because when they prayed, God's hand was working mightily among them. The mighty work of God with power was working right through in their middle, in their midst. You know? So, prayer was one of the secrets of their success. They knew how to pray. And God was moving in an, uh, you know previously unseen manner. Even during Jesus' time, we haven't seen things like this. That is the way people are being added to the church now. See? So, when, you know, when different ministries you know, ask the preachers, what is the secret of the success of your ministry? Same thing, you know, people ask to Charles Spurgeon also, the British preacher. You know? They went up to him and asked him, what is the secret of your remarkable ministry? And Spurgeon said, my people pray for me. You know? Somebody asked St. Augustine you know, about prayer. And St. Augustine said like this, he said, Pray as though everything depended on God and work as though everything depends on you. Okay, Augustine says, pray as though everything depends on God and work as though everything depends on you. So prayer is not an escape from reality. Prayer is not an escape from responsibility. It is our response to God's ability. Okay, I'll say it again. Prayer is not an escape plan. Prayer is not an escape from responsibility. Prayer is our response to God's ability. So, when you say true prayer, it actually energizes us for service. It energizes us to face the Christian battle. So, prayer is our response to God's ability. We believe that God, God is able. So, we work. So, we work. You know? So, you know, many people are reluctant to pray. They say, they say like, oh, anyway, God will do whatever He pleases, so why should we pray? That is the wrong attitude. That is the you know, karma attitude. Like, <laughs> You are already determining that, okay, that God, even if I pray or don't pray, God will work whatever he wants. No. That's not the way the Bible teaches us. Even Jesus, the Son of God, had to pray. So, how much more we? No. It shows our dependence on God's ability. It shows our trust in God's ability. It shows our faith. So, a man of faith, a person of faith, must pray. Must pray. As though everything depends on God. And then he must work as though everything depends on himself. Right? So that's how God works. God works through us when we pray and we work. So prayer is our response to God's ability. True prayer energizes us for service and battle. Christian life is a battle. Okay. So again, they preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Okay? Again, the focus of attention is on the name of Jesus. Verse 7, by what power or by what name have you done this? See, that's the question. Verse 10 gives you the answer. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the name, that name is an irritation for them. See. So, what can a person, what can a child of God do with his name? That's what we're going to see in this chapter. See, three groups of people are going to do something with his name. That we are going to see. First is the apostles. Okay, What do they do with Jesus' name? They defend his name. They defend his name. First of all, there is a court scene. And the court scene is completely cons consisting of the high priest men. Okay? They are like the chamchas of the high priest. So you have the whole high priest family there. The Jewish religious system had become so corrupt it would only pass on from one relative to another. Right? There was no regard for God's word. There was no regard for you know, even the ruling uh, Roman government. 
they just did you know uh, what, what do we call nepotism now no that time it was like that it was first uh, annas you know he was the main high priest in israel appointed by the jewish sanhedrin when the romans had taken over they appointed annas they let annas continue but they knew that annas was a difficult man to work with he was a you know hardcore uh, what do you call it uh, uh, he was like a, you know he was he used to make the romans do what he wanted so he was like a king maker he was like a godfather there so they slowly said in they brought this rule saying that a high priest can only be a high priest for one year after that he had to step down and somebody else has to come up so anna said five sons so he allowed each son to continue in the throne of that uh, high priest okay the seat of the high priest so after annas term is over first son became the high priest second son became the high priest like that one by one all his sons became the high priest after five years no more sons left and annas cannot become a high priest again so what did he do he made kayafa his son in law he made him the next uh, he made sure that he was the next uh, high priest okay so his kayafa was now appointed as the high priest so nepotist is a man who being evil knows how to give good gifts to his children okay so annas is very much qualified to become a nepotist father an evil man who knows how to give good gifts to his children that's what a nepotist is right so here is annas being the power behind the throne and kayafas and kayafas continued in power for more than i think 7 years how did he do that we don't know but the, he continued you know uh, he did not give up the throne for 7 years but the power behind the throne of kayafas was always annas okay so annas and kayafas anna annas and kayafas two sides of a same wicked coin okay that's what the father in law and the son in law were like made for each other so they were sticking together and they were corrupting the whole system so now we see that there is an official meeting of the sanhedrin verse 15 tells us that but when they had commanded them to go outside aside out of the council they conferred among themselves see the sanhedrin <coughs> the same council that a few months ago had condemned jesus to die so these men actually recognized peter and john as the associates of jesus right verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men they marveled and they realized that they had been with jesus see so what is john and peter's credential unschooled right uneducated untrained men but they had been with jesus amazing no that gave him the authority that gave him the power that gave him all what is required to become a minister of god see <clears throat> now the sanhedrin is charged with the responsibility of protecting the jewish law okay so according to them these people are posing a threat threat to the jewish faith threat to the land so they had the right to investigate what these men were doing but they did not have the right to arrest innocent people they could only observe the evidence they could only observe the circumstances they could they had no right to arrest them because they did not do anything wrong illegal okay so their question is a legal question they would not now they can't avoid admitting that the miracle has happened because the man who was healed is right in front of them right he is there in their midst so they are avoiding this title for miracle and saying this this you know uh, when you look at that um, uh, by what power or by what name verse seven by what power or by what name have you done this they can't do miracles these men also they know that can't do miracles but how are they able to do this that's what they are asking so they want they don't want to use the term miracle there they are using a very simple term called this to explain it off right so the question they are asking is legal 
but they don't want to admit that there has been a miracle there so they are full of scorn they are full of hatred for these people and they don't want to credit them with approval divine divine you know uh, authority they don't want to give them this said so if god has to do something they have to do with the sanhedrin we are the holy people you guys are after all fishermen you haven't studied the law you don't have a religious background so how can god use you so now they are asking by whose name see so they might be using the devil's name even you know according to the sanhedrin because they know that in the old testament even satan has performed miracles so it could be the devil whom they are invoking to do this miracle so the question is very much legal by whose name by what name are you doing this so let's look at the by whose name peter spoke in the power of the holy spirit see so it says here peter filled with verse 8 peter filled with the holy spirit said to them peter was again filled with the holy spirit in verse 31 and they were um, and when they prayed the place where they were assembled together was shaking and they were all filled with the holy spirit peter was there in that group also yeah. and earlier also you know verse uh, uh, chapter 2 uh, also we see that peter full of the holy spirit spoke to them see so being baptized by the spirit is a one time event that is at conversion right but there must be many fillings if the believer is to live an effective christian life as a witness to jesus then he must be receiving repeated fillings many fillings of the holy spirit see so baptism of the holy spirit is only once during conversion okay i i shared with this verse earlier i'm going to share it again first corinthians chapter 12 first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13 first corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13 for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body whether jews or greeks whether slaves or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit for in fact the body is not one member but many so that at the point of conversion when we are saved we are baptized by the holy spirit it's a one time event we don't need to be converted again and again but we need to be filled by the holy spirit after that repeatedly we need to be filled i can't depend on last week's filling for working today for being effective today to work as jesus witness being powerful today i need the filling today right ephesians uh, 5:18 ephesians 5 and 18 eighteen onwards i'm going to read downwards okay Uh, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things to god the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting to one another in the fear of god these are things which god enables you to do when you are filled with the holy spirit you see so don't we think don't you think that we need this filling every day to continue you know uh speaking in, to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the lord giving thanks always for all things to the lord father in the name of our lord jesus submitting to one another in the fear of god we need to do this every day so we need the filling every day okay so baptism is one time event but filling has to keep on being filled be ye filled okay so continuously present continuous tense be filled with the holy spirit now peter began with an explanation how this miracle happened now you can imagine the sanhedrin members were attending the temple in jerusalem so when they pass that way they they often see this man along with the other beggars begging outside the temple gate they saw him also sitting there so he's a familiar face he's been there for many many years see so some of them would have even given arms you know money to this man you know and prayed for him also now how could this man be healed now and jesus and peter says it is by the name of jesus christ of nazareth now when he spoke that name you know it would have cut right through their hearts why because hey they are the guys who sentenced him to die right they had passed the sentence first that is he is blaspheming so jesus had to die and now 
the man that they had finished off they had thought that he's gotten rid of the prophet from nazareth now his followers were telling everybody that jesus is alive now according to the sadducees the sadducees don't believe in resurrection so when peter declares that he has come back from the dead it is like a declaration of war against the sadducees <clears throat> but the spirit was telling peter say this and peter was just speaking repeating those words no jesus told them no when you stand before leaders rulers don't don't preplan what to what to speak but the holy spirit will speak through he will remind you and you will speak he will give you utterance and you will speak his words luke 21 now where the, the apostle is quoting psalm 118 verse 22 right so the one that has become uh, the cornerstone is jesus the one the stone that the builders rejected he said that same thing in the previous message also right so what is he saying he's telling them that this is the messiah you rejected him see so who are the builders here they are the builders they rejected him and he was god's stone jesus the son of god see so to the sanhedrin when jesus when peter is speaking this it is not something new they knew what the stone the rock stands for the rock was a symbol of god is symbol of god you know when they were walking through the wilderness water from the rock Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4 Deuteronomy 32 and verse 4 He is the rock his work is perfect for all his ways are justice the god of truth and without injustice righteousness righteous and upright is he we have a song on that right righteous and upright is he see so from the old testament they know that rock means god he says you have rejected the rock and has become the chief cornerstone the jews stumbled over this rock and they rejected him now to those who trusted in him jesus christ has become the main the precious cornerstone and peter calls him the chief cornerstone not only here even in peter's uh, uh God, you know epistle also he has written that first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 8 first peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 8 coming to him as to a living stone rejected indeed by men but chosen by god and precious you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ therefore it is also contained in the scripture behold i lay in zion the chief cornerstone elect precious and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame therefore to you who believe he is precious but to those who are disobedient the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense so the image of the stone very much they understand he's talking about god right now he when prophet daniel spoke he used the rock as a symbol of the messiah and the coming kingdom of the messiah on the earth right so the jews know their history well they know the old testament very well sanhedrin are experts in the law see so jesus is the precious cornerstone and then peter goes on to explain this cornerstone is not just a stone he is also the savior verse 12 nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved so he's explaining he's not only the stone but he's also the savior see when he, he you know jesus healed the beggar through peter peter is seeing a big picture here and he's saying 
the spiritual healing that comes through salvation. Now, this physical healing has made this man whole. Same way, we need to be made whole. I may not have lame feet, but I have a lame spirit. You see, I'm in need of healing. I am. I need to be made whole. So, in this healing, like this beggar was made perfect. We need to be made perfect. We need to be made whole. Okay. So that means it is for salvation. You know, Acts chapter 4 verse 9. If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ. See, So salvation means wholeness. Salvation means spiritual health. Right? So the word made whole, the two words made whole, if you have used the Greek word for it, the Greek word is translated saved. Saved. Okay. So salvation means wholeness. Salvation means spiritual health. And Jesus Christ is the great physician who can heal mankind's greatest disease. The sickness of sin. The sickness of sin. See. So he's saying anybody in Israel if you put your trust in Jesus, the sin sickness has a remedy. And the solution is Jesus the Savior. See, So right now, the message is going exclusively out to the Jews. right? That's why Peter is quoting exclusively from the Psalms, from Deuteronomy and all those places. He knows that they know the Old Testament. And so that's how he defended the Lord, defended the name of Jesus. He presented that this is the same Jesus of which the prophet spoke. The same Jesus of which the Old Testament speaks. The rock about which the Old Testament speaks. And he is Jesus himself. Secondly, he's not just a rock. He's also the savior. He's not just a stone. He's also the savior. He is here to make you and me whole. He is here to restore spiritual health to us. And that's why he has come. He's the great physician. And he alone can solve mankind's greatest problem and that is sickness, sin sickness, sin sickness. Okay, I'm closing with verse 10. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you whole. Before you whole. Okay? It's not just his lame legs that were healed. He has been made Hold. He has been saved. He has been saved. See? So that's the amazing thing that has happened. And that has to happen in all our lives. And that's to happen in the lives of people whom we love. Right? People whom God brings to contact with us. Every one of them need to be made whole. And that's what Peter is trying to tell us. Okay? So Peter is a person who defended the name of Jesus. And what are we supposed to do? Today, we are supposed to defend the name of Jesus. You know, how do we do that? See, it is, depends on your knowledge of the Old Testament. It depends on your knowledge of the New Testament. But it's not just about knowledge. It's about surrendering to this name, submitting to the authority of this name and saying, Lord, use me. Use me today. And the Holy Spirit will remind you all that verses that connect to Jesus. Did you know that Jesus, when he was explaining to the disciples on the way from Amos, he was explaining to Jesus everything from the law and explaining to them that it is he. It is he that the Old Testament speaks about. Which Old Testament is he speaking about? He's speaking about the Torah then. You know? He's speaking about the Old Testament which you are having in your hands. So from the Old Testament, Jesus showed them that I am he. So he connected the Old Testament. Now the Old Testament is like picture book. Okay? It's like this ABCD book from our kindergarten days. Your first standard and kindergarten days. We need that. right? The New Testament is the explanation of those pictures. So we need the old and we need the new. And in the old, it's very, very important because that's where God laid the foundation of who he is. So Jesus explained from the pages of the Old Testament who he is. Did you know that every page in the Old Testament is showing you pictures of Jesus? You know, And we have to learn to show Jesus from the Old Testament. We're very confident of using the New Testament to use it for preaching and evangelism. But did you know that, did we know that you know, there is so much 
that the old testament speaks about jesus i just give an example you know just to wind it up light you know it all starts with let there be light and jesus says come to me i am the light see the light that came and dwelt among men then he speaks the word let there be and john chapter 1 says god jesus the son of god is the word see so every page is screaming out jesus you know the creator he created all these things and colossians says in him and for him and by him and through him all things were created right so jesus was there he was creating and then it speaks about adam the first adam jesus the second adam first man second man picture of jesus again coming down the rib of adam you know from the rib out came the woman flesh of my flesh bone of my bones right jesus from the side of jesus the church was born flesh of his flesh and bone of his bones right so when you see the old testament it's all pictures about jesus on so every page is screaming out somewhere or the other jesus 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 that's why you know those disciples were able to explain from the old testament it is he this is that man this is that messiah whom the old testament speaks about see so every promise in the old testament every picture book in the old testament every picture in the old testament is being revealed in the new testament in jesus christ in jesus christ so let us learn the old testament and understand how to explain him from the old testament it is a great great blessing okay so as we go out let's thank god for the old testament and the new testament and let's also ask the lord lord teach us more of the old testament to see you in every page of the old testament so that we will be able to explain who the messiah really is on the foundation that has been laid through the old testament you know beautiful i i remember that passage in acts which says the eunuch was in the chariot and he was reading the book of isaiah he was not reading the gospels gospels had not yet been written he was reading the book of isaiah and right there you know james the evangelist james uh, you know gets in there and he explains to him right and there is a conversion that happens explaining jesus from the book of isaiah explaining jesus from the book of daniel explaining jesus from the book of esther you know seeing him in the old testament pages is amazing that says something that a christian ought to do when he reads the old testament he should search out you know how does this chapter connect to jesus how does it show me a picture of jesus in this chapter and every page of the old testament will cry out the messiah that's him that's jesus and that's when we start making sense of the old testament right so let's pray and ask the holy spirit lord reveal the lord to me this new year as i go through the bible challenge me to go through the old testament in a way that i have not gone before and help me to see jesus in every page of the old testament because that's how jesus explained himself to them as of the apostles explained him to them so let's also go back to the old testament and let's start seeing pictures of jesus on every page let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you you're a god who loves us and you have been revealing yourself through us over the ages first through the jews and then through the new testament and every book every page that has been written in this word of god showing us pictures of you so that we may understand who this great and mighty god really is who is this great messiah and what did he do for us and as we look through the old testament pages help us to see the types of christ embedded in those pages so that our lives would become meaningful and the purpose that for which you have called us would become more and more clear o lord father and the holy spirit may be able to use all of scripture to guide me teach me and to make me strong and grow I pray and commit each of us into your hands this new year give us the passion to read the word of god especially the old testament books books that i have not read in my life help me to be challenged to read those books today to go through them and understand how Jesus is spoken of in every page of the Old Testament. Commit myself into your hands in Jesus name. Amen.